We will do a fairly, um, I don't know, bare bones kind of program today. I, I might grab a block or a bolster. I don't even have my mat set up. This program is more designed. So we've done a couple of programs that are designed, you know, if you feel like you have to burn off some extra energy, this one is more if you're just ready to slide completely into sleep. So this will be a more passive practice. You could even do this. So the most common type of insomnia is what they call sleep maintenance insomnia. Very common to sleep for a chunk, be up for a little while, and then sleep for a chunk again. There is even a theory that that is a normal kind of circadian rhythm to sleep in two chunks. Siesta culture is very similar. You go to bed later, you sleep, you get up and maybe you have a two hour nap in the afternoon, something like that. Um, unfortunately, since the industrial revolution, we don't really have that luxury of, you know, the sun goes down, so you go to sleep because candles are expensive. You wake up, they would encourage smoking in the middle of the night or eating. Um, that's not really Ayurvedic or good for you, but you could do something like this program to have, you know, something kind of nice and relaxing to do and then slide into that second half of sleep. Um, so that is our, yeah, our program for today it might be a little bit shorter. Anytime I say that I always get carried away and then just like, we do like a two hour practice. So I'll do my best <laughs> to do a shorter program. Um, and our info topic, let's talk about the gunas. So traditionally in Ayurveda, we have, my friend says the doshas, the koshas and the gunas. I'm going to need some dipping sauce. <laughs> that it does sound like it might be some kind of fried food or something like that. So our doshas that we looked at are your um, constitution, your kind of like your, your core temperament. Temperament theorists, separate from Ayurveda, but the same belief, believe that your core personality stays the same throughout your life. So you are born as this kind of like hyperactive fun person or determined fiery person or a stable easygoing person it's just going to stay that way your gunas are just are more about your mental state and are easily changed and you can go back and forth from one to the other and that might even be a healthy thing so um if you want to spell it it's phonetic sort of g U N A S Guna. And I don't know, I can put this in the chat if anybody would like it. And our three Gunas are Rajas, Tamas, and Sattva. And I'll give us a little rundown for what each of them means. And then you'll get a, an email with a link to actually even more detail if you want to know. So our first one, Rajas. This is our go, go, go kind of energy. Um, it's sometimes defined as like a spinning, whirling kind of energy. It's a momentum. It's, you know, that feeling when you kind of, um, you're burning your candle at both ends and you just can't stop. That's like the dark side of Rajas or a Rajasic energy. It's um, when you get into a life state that you just keep putting one foot in front of the other and you really can't stop. So this is great when there are times where we need change. Something happens and you have to leap into action and you're running, running, running. The dark side in terms of sleep is when you can't shut off at night. You get into bed and you feel like your body is still vibrating and like your mind is spinning and you sort of have this like uh, <laughs> energy. Um, so that is in a nutshell, if it feels like movement, either mentally, physically, emotionally, Rajas. The flip side is Thomas. Um, a lack of movement inertia, a dullness, a stagnation. So this would be maybe Monday to Friday, you're very rajasic, go, 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 go. And then Saturday morning comes and you just can't get out of bed. You can't 
move. You have no get up and go. You hit a wall. Um, so this can be helpful when there are, you know, times of stress that not reacting is good. You know, when your boss starts yelling at you and you feel a shutdown, it's kind of a good idea not to yell back, right? So it's not always a bad thing to have this kind of dull inability to start. You sort of, maybe something surprising happens and you feel like all your thoughts kind of bottleneck and you just sort of, uh, uh, and, and nothing comes out. There is a time and a place for everything. We don't need to be completely engaged all the time. So when something stressful or traumatic happens and you kind of go into shutdown mode, that is a good way to preserve your energy. But we don't always want to be in the dark side of these two energies, right? Unable to stop or unable to get going or what, what we can call like a go, go, go collapse or what we often see is a coffee and wine culture. If you like watch Mad Men, you know, they start the day with a cigarette and then they have to have a drink later. We start the day, you know, I think our culture, like the number of shirts, pencil cases, um, custom travel mugs that you can buy that say, first I drink the coffee, then I do the things. That is an imbalance between waking up very tamasic and then powering into a rajasic state or, um, you can buy shirts that say first the gym, then the wine, or, you know, I exercise so I can drink that kind of thing. So what is the better way to be? Sattva. This is a peaceful engagement. This is what we think of when we, our energies are balanced. We're staying in the present moment. We're living in the now. We're having a pleasant conversation. And this is how Marianne Williamson, kind of described it like this. <laughs> so she's she's giving a talk and somebody said, you know, how can I just be like at peace with everything? And she says, no, here's the thing. What if somebody in the audience says, this man's having a heart attack? Would the speaker say, everything is as it should be? No, <laughs> no. She said, you start saying, is there a doctor in the audience? Somebody call 911, right? You rush into action. And for the person having a heart attack, they might go into that more tamasic state and just surrender and wait for people to do all the activity around them. So it is okay. There's no like labeling of good or bad. There is a time and a place for anything. And we should hopefully pull on that rajasic energy when we need it pull in the tamasic energy when we need it. But sattva is our homeostasis that we come back to in order to be restful. So we have this perfect balance. In the language of the nervous system, we have fight and flight, or we have freezing or fawning, which is one is too active. We see this in, um, in PTSD with there's a too active a stress response or uh, freezing or fawning. We see this in an ability to advocate for one's own needs. Um, depression, they're now thinking actually may be, and I'm no expert to talk about this, is an issue with the nervous system being more in this freezing or fawning kind of deflated state. Um, the Buddha kind of talks about, uh, and again, I'm no expert on Buddhism. This is just a concept that I know about, that you can either be grasping or giving up or you choose the middle way or the third path that is neither one of those. So how do we develop this energy of sattva? Pretty much any yoga practice will get you there. A balanced yoga practice, a balanced yoga practice. So if you notice that you are that go, go, go type of energy and you decide to do a hot power flow at a heated yoga studio seven days a week, that's just going to feed that fire. So we might do a little bit of movement and then some other things to, to, we can burn up that energy, that's fine. And then other things to be more peacefully engaged. If you notice that you are dull, inactive, deflated, do some stuff that helps you shift into that state of change. Even things like washing the dishes, doing your laundry, cleaning the house, that's a state shift, right? That you've been dirty and now you're clean. Change is good. Um, so that that, and that for that kind of person doing only restorative or only yin yoga, 
too much of the same thing. So we can get them moving, flowing, doing some sun salutations. So it's a, a practice of balancing opposites, the same as with our doshas. If you feel dehydrated, drink water. If you feel hot, cool down. So whatever energy you feel you have, we can kind of meet the mood with that same sort of energy. If you're feeling dull, start slowly. If you're feeling like you're moving too much, work on slowing down before you stop um, and just building a balanced practice, whatever your practice may be. There, um, walking meditation is great because it's again, sort of peaceful, a little bit of movement, but stillness of the mind. Breath work is pretty good. Again, a little bit of movement, but stillness of the body um, and any other balanced practice that you find. Okay, any questions on the gunas? That is all I have to say. It is a shorter talk for tonight. Awesome. So apparently the secret to a good night's sleep is that sattvic state. This is actually, it's funny that this is my shortest info session so far because it is the overarching concept for this whole program is that if we can have that balance <laughs> between go, go, go and collapse and be more peacefully engaged, this apparently is the secret to being able to wake up feeling okay and then be able to wind down for sleep and the time in between hopefully staying in that peaceful engagement or appropriately going back and forth between Rajas and Thomas. And when we're ready, we'll start as we did before. We can have a moment to do a little bit of journaling. If there is anything you would like to get off your chest or empty out your mind, we can spend a moment here doing this. We could also use this time to do our little drop of essential oil. In our palms or if we have uh, a tissue we could do that I'm going to give us a little bit of music could also make a note of if you think you spend more time in Rajas movement and change or if you think you spend more time in Thomas lack of movement staying the same or if you think you are in Sattva a lot of the time being peacefully engaged that's okay in fact that's what we're looking for
no rush, but when you're ready, we'll start seated. So if you would like to sit in a chair for our opening meditation, be my guest. And if you're ready to come down onto your mat or the floor or wherever you're working today, we can go there. And then we can spend a moment either with eyes closed or eyes downcast to help quiet our energy and focus inward. Let's just notice what our mental or physical energetic state is at this very moment. So you may feel a kind of spinning energy shifting and changing inside you. You may feel more static and dull or disengaged and that's okay. If that's so, just noticing. If you're feeling rooted in the present moment, connected, engaged, fantastic, that's great too. But let's try not to get too hung up with priding ourselves on feeling the right way or chastising ourselves for feeling the wrong way because ultimately we should be lifting the ego away from this anyways, just noticing what's going on. We can take it all as information. You may like to choose a word to describe how you're feeling. And then let's come into our mudra or hand position for today. So I'll show you. This one's a little pretzely. We take our first two fingers together with our thumb. Perfect. And then we have to cross our wrists and connect our pinkies. So it's very beautiful once we get there, but a little confusing on the way there. Yeah. Okay, good. I'll show you one more time. If you've already got it, you can stay where you are. So our first two fingers and our thumbs we cross our wrists. For some reason, it usually feels tangled with one wrist in front and natural with the other wrist in front. That's totally fine. And then we connect our pinkies. If it feels really tight, just crossing the wrists is okay. So this is our key to good health gesture. So as we hold this gesture, it is symbolizing our good health and helping our bodies to be in better balance. We can close our eyes if we like. And the suggested affirmation for this hand position is, I picture my mind as a lake, and as I hold this gesture, the waves grow calmer. I picture my mind as a lake, and the waves grow calmer. We may be practicing ujjayi breath or ocean breath, Darth Vader breath, constricting the muscles of our throat so that we can hear our breath in our own ears, sort of like holding a seashell up to your ear. A very gentle sound to help keep our minds focused. And maybe we picture the shore of the lake, we inhale and the waves come closer, and we exhale and the waves go back out into the lake gradually growing calmer.
And maybe now we're picturing the surface of the lake still as glass. Well, let's go ahead and release our hands anywhere comfortable on our knees, maybe on chest and belly to be more focused on our breath. Either way, that's up to you. And we'll do what's called a four, seven, eight breath. So we inhale for a count of four, hold the breath for seven, and then exhale for a count of eight. So I'll lead you through it. You might not breathe exactly the same speed as me. So we inhale, one, two, three, four. Gently hold the breath, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, seven, eight. So let's go through that four times. I'll give us enough time here. Inhale four, pause for seven, gentle in the throat, and then exhaling for eight, and gently releasing. So let's see if we can be peacefully engaged with this breath. We're not tensing too hard. We can add on one more option. We can do a pursed lip exhale. So same thing, inhale four, hold for seven, and then blow through the lips on eight. Let's give it one more. and then allow the breath to come back to a natural pattern. Once more noticing how we're feeling, seeing if there's been any shift. And when we're ready, we can open our eyes and let's do a little bit of movement. We won't do too, too much flowing movement today. We're gonna to take it nice and easy. So let's sit tall, really pressing down through with whatever's touching your floor or the seat. If you're in a chair, you can push your feet down. And we'll inhale one arm up and over, take a deep breath in. And let's do three of these. So we'll do one, two, and we'll hold on three, pausing a little longer. If it's not comfortable to have the arm all the way overhead, of course, we could bend it or take hand to shoulder. But anytime we get this side bend in our spine, we can open our lung capacity in one side of the ribs. And we'll do three to switch sides. Let's go again. Here we go. One. Two. And we hold on three. Come back through center. And let's come into a child's pose. We're not gonna do anything too fancy in child's, but it'll give us a break from sitting. We can swing our legs around, and we're sitting our hips towards our heels, extending arms forward if that's comfortable, or coming onto forearms. We might be up a lot higher, making it a, as big a movement as you like to feel comfortable. And then if we need some movement, we could be doing another lateral reach, walking the hands to one side and then the other. You may prefer to be lifting into a downward dog shape, or maybe some other kind of movement like a cat and cow. So take a moment for yourself, again, listening to your body, shaping this practice to make it work for you.
And let's not get too comfy. No rush, but we are gonna meet in a butterfly stretch. So we'll come back to seated. And yogi's choice, often this one is done pulling our feet in as close as we possibly can. But anywhere between a close position and sometimes it's called a diamond stretch, bringing our feet as far forward as we like without them splitting apart. So if we can still keep our soles of our feet together and let our knees turn out, just a different variation. So let's make sure that we can sit tall to begin and find a position that feels good. And then gently allowing ourselves to give in to the stretch. This may mean we're coming quite far forward, maybe not. And we might need to adjust as we go there too. So lifting and lowering the knees to help us drop into it. And we can use our breath here. So with our inhale, we might feel a little lift. And with our exhale, encouraging this sense of comfortable surrender. We can make our way back to a seated position and let's leave our legs as they are or you might want to readjust cross-legged or a little bit closer but we're going to move our spines in the opposite direction so we can take our fingertips behind us and then press down to lift our chest depending on the length of your arms you might have a flat hand on the floor Extending through the spine and then option to close the eyes. So this is supposed to signal the brain that we are relaxed If we tilt the head back and close the eyes, we should be able to comfortably swallow or again re-engage our ujjayi breath Our ocean breath, whatever you call it so that we can hear our own breath here Come back through to seated and yogi's choice. Option to straighten our legs. We might want a bend in the knees to be a bit more relaxing for our, um, for our hamstrings and to fold into it. We could do a variation with a huge bend in the legs as well. So here are our two choices. We can do it with our feet towards one another or everybody's favorite, nobody's favorite a wide-legged forward fold. So whether our legs are together or apart, we have the option to bend our knees. Um, and I'll give us enough time, you can do both if you want, and when we lie down, we'll do a similar variation. So we have more than enough time to practice this kind of folding forward and releasing wherever you feel tension. We can start tall and then begin to give in. And I'll give us a couple of minutes here. So even if you are sort of like up here feeling really tight, we have a couple minutes to settle in, to breathe, to notice our bodies hopefully giving in. And if you're not quite sure where to put your thoughts while we're here, one option is to sort of watch the evolution of the pose. So as we hold it, seeing moment by moment how it changes in a subtle way. 
We can also just be counting our breath as a place to put our minds. Inhaling four and exhaling four. So we've been here about a minute. You might like to readjust. So if your legs are close, you can take them a little further. If they're far, you can take them a little closer. And then we come right back in. We can go ahead and loosen up our hips if it feels good. We might want to windshield wipe our legs. Option here, we can come back to a seated position, but you could also do this as a visualization if ever you're lying down. I'll show us how to do single nostril breath for sleep. I'll start with the super easy way to do it. So I will mirror you. In order to breathe for sleep, here is um, the side of our breath, our nose that we want to be breathing in and out of. So in order to wake up, we want to breathe in and out through the right side. In order to sleep or wind down, we want to breathe in and out through the left side. So if we want to feel sleepier now, go ahead and plug your right nostril. Like I said, you could always do it lying down as a visualization. We have been sitting for a while and just breathe normally. If you're a little stuffy, um, this might take time or you might want to do it as a visualization, like I said. Or you could do it as a, a little bit of a cheat is actually to lie on your right side and it helps open up the left side. And I believe the more you practice this, the better your body gets at it. You sort of condition yourself into it because now when I get into bed, I lie down, I roll on my right side and in under two minutes, I switch my left nostril opens up and I lie on my back and I go to sleep. It used to take a lot longer. We can add on, making our exhale longer. So maybe inhale for four, exhale for eight. And if 
we want to do it the fancy way, we switch nostrils. So we can take our thumb instead. Again, we could be doing this lying down as a visualization. We could be lying on the right side, or we can do the fancy stuff. Inhale through your left for a count of four. And then switch, plug, exhale through your right for a count of eight. Inhale left for four. Exhale right for eight. And you may notice that you've had a bit of an energetic shift already. You may notice that your nostril, your dominant nostril has switched. Even if you haven't noticed any change, it's still kind of laying the groundwork for your brain to go, oh, it's time to rest and digest. Let's go ahead and lie down. And again, a moment to do whatever we feel we need to do. So you might like to lift into a bridge, maybe a windshield wipe side to side. Knees to chest or a long stretch. And let's do a single leg to chest. So from knees to chest, we can lightly hold our shins, or it might be more comfortable to hold the back of your leg or even your pant leg, but we'll hold just the right leg in and stretch the left leg out. And then I always think it feels good to do some movement of the stretched out leg. So you can point your toes up and then out to the side like a ballerina. Do a little wiggle internally and externally rotating, maybe lift it up a little bit and then press it down. Point and flex the ankles, circle the ankles. I, don't, I always think it settles a little bit better to do some movement of the straight leg. And then we're just gonna use our arms to give our bellies a massage with our bent leg. We can take a deep breath in. And as we let our breath out, draw the thigh in a touch closer. You may notice some resistance if you just ate a heavy meal. You may also notice it helps with digestion. But let's come into a twist here. So we can plant our right foot down. And we're going to push our right leg down to lift our bums up and come just onto the left side of the pelvis. So we have to hip lift and then shift. And this helps us to move more safely into our twist. So we push down to lift our hips, come onto just the left side, and then we can draw the right leg across into any comfortable position. So we could be here using just our bodies to do the stretch. We've done it before with a prop under the knee. We could also uh, use our hand to hold our leg. We could stack our legs so that the bottom one holds the top one up. Often it's comfortable just to take a fist between the knees. And we can think of our three guna states as rajas being trying hard or working hard. And tamas as being not trying at all. And there's this term in yoga that people use that can be thought of as sattva, where we, rather than trying hard, we try softer in our stretches. So yes, we are still doing our best, but we can be soft while we're doing it.
relaxing the muscles of our torso so we can do a gentle expansive breath. Might feel like there are sort of some cobwebs in our lungs, but bit by bit as we settle in and stretch and take deeper breaths, we're kind of clearing out the cobwebs. We can start to make our way back through to the center and set up for the other side. Again, you may like to take a moment to reset or kind of digest what we just did, either moving like windshield wiping or something like that, or pausing in stillness. And then we're ready for our second side, right? We can draw knees to chest, giving ourselves a hug. We can hold our left leg, extending our right. Might feel good to do some movement of our right leg, our straight leg, turning our foot in and out. Lifting the leg and lowering down pushing down or pointing and flexing the feet. And then let's use our upper body strength, drawing our left leg into our bellies, taking a deep breath. We can hug it a little more tightly on our exhale. And let's come into our twist. So we're releasing our left foot, lifting our hips or shifting our hips so that we can come onto the right side of the pelvis, guiding our left knee across, and settling into a comfortable kind of twist. So that may mean stacking the legs, maybe not, maybe a prop or a fist between the knees. We could also be doing the same kind of movement, shifting the hips, and then just landing in a windshield wipe position so the knees just stay to one side. No matter what we choose, we're still getting some range of motion of rotation, so we're in good shape. Twists are, according to yoga, thought to be creating an energetic shift. They're very cooling and settling and perfect for winding down either at the end of a yoga practice or at the end of a day. Let's see if we can try softer to release into the stretch.
taking our time here, but when we feel symmetrical, like we've had the same amount of stretch between one side and the other, we can come back through and again, reset or digest the pose with a moment of stillness. And we'll finish with happy baby. So let's do the same thing that we already did. So you might do um, from a knees to chest, both legs and happy baby, or we can do a single leg happy baby. So we draw the right knee in and then we just hold the right side. So right knee comes in. The right knee can come out to the side, a very passive way of doing it. We could kind of stamp our foot up to the ceiling. Traditionally, we take our first two fingers around our big toe and we apply even pressure pulling down, kicking up and our toe, we don't want to bend the toe, we want to keep it in a straight joint so our toe muscles even get a little bit of a workout and then we're pulling our leg out to the side. So we could do this one leg at a time or both legs together. When we do one leg at a time, we get more stillness. If we do both legs together, we have an opportunity to get some soothing rocking movement in. So this might be nice if you are feeling quite dull, quite inert, tamasic, to get some gentle movement going. Create some opposition to any stagnation in the body by having some movement going. Either one is totally fine. Sometimes the benefit to these still stretches is if you share a bed with somebody, you won't wake them up by doing this sort of thing. And if we're doing only one side, let's make sure we do both sides. Opposite leg in. Our knee can come up to the side. We could do a very gentle bent leg version. We could hold our big toe, our ankle, heel, or even the back of the thigh. So yes, we've been using all of our props and that sort of thing, but we really don't need anything to get a good yoga experience. If we have a willing mind, then we can have a good practice. If there is any final pose that you would like, make sure we sneak it in. So pigeon is often a favorite, sleeping pigeon. Sometimes people like an extra twist. Sneak in a second twist. We also have our option for a final relaxation. We could be just lying on our backs. Uh, some of us are fans of legs up the wall. You may like supported fish where we place a bolster under our backs. We could be lying on one side in kind of a baby pose or fetal position as we call it. Comfort is the name of the game. Wherever you would like to go to feel comfortable, that is the perfect place to be. And we're going to settle into a longer yoga nidra. So our yoga nidra can be anywhere between, I don't know, 
seven minutes and an hour. We are not going to do an hour long one. But if you do find that you fall asleep during this, totally fine. In fact, it would be a nice way to kind of slip into sleep. So we can start by getting rid of any final fidgets, readjusting. Like I said, if you have another pose you wanted to do, or if you're taking a while setting up blankets, pillows, that kind of thing. We know we're going to be here for a while. Um, so we don't want to be sort of uncomfortable waiting for class to be over. Get as comfortable as you need to be. And if at any point you feel like you need to move, that is okay. Move, readjust, do whatever we need to do. Might feel nice to take a deep breath in through the nose and then exhale from the mouth. <sighs> Letting it go. There's another technique where we do two breaths in through the nose and then exhale from the mouth. So we inhale maybe 75%, 25%, and then let go 100%. So that kind of long exhale release and sigh is supposed to send a signal from our heart to our brain that it is time to wind down and calm down. So we did our single nostril breath with just our left nostril, sends the same message. We did a, a long exhale, our four, inhale four, exhale for eight, sends the same message to wind down or that kind of sigh, double inhale and a sigh, mouth opened or closed sends the same kind of message. We'll do our four, seven, eight breath again. And this one is supposed to be fantastic. Again, for if we're feeling dull or depressed or if we're feeling wound up or anxious, it's supposed to bring us into that happy Goldilocks middle position. So we inhale for four, hold the breath for seven, careful not to grip, and then as we exhale for eight, we can blow through the lips. <sighs> kind of like we're breathing through a straw. There's also the recommendation to take the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth just behind your front teeth. So sort of the front roof of your mouth. We can leave it there as we inhale for four. Lungs full, we pause for seven. And then we can leave the tongue on the roof of the mouth as we exhale for eight. Gentle pursed lip. And rather than thinking it as holding the breath, we might actually think of it as just suspending the breath. Kind of like we've thrown a ball up in the air and it pauses for a moment. Or if you remember playing with the parachute in elementary school, we lift. And there's this kind of weightless hover. So let's see if our breath can be weightless rather than, you know, gripping with the tongue at the back of the throat, keeping the throat open. Let's do one more round of that four, seven, eight breath. And I'm going to read to us a balancing meditation from Yoga Nidra for Complete Relaxation and Stress Relief by Julie Lusk. Let's get ready to experience Yoga Nidra. Traditionally, this is done lying down on our backs, aligning head, neck, and spine. Or if we like using a cushion under your head, a blanket, anything else that we need, 
relaxing our shoulders away from our ears. If you're lying on your back, there's the option to tuck or walk the shoulder blades underneath your back towards one another. Traditionally, we place our arms out to the side with our palms up. But we may like to have a hand on belly or chest to be more connected to breath and body. Or if we feel kind of um, weightless and scattered, placing the palms down can help us to feel more grounded. So whatever helps us get into a comfortable resting position is fine. You may like to plant your feet flat on the floor if that's more comfortable lying on your back rather than having your legs out straight. And if we notice that we're using our muscles to keep our toes turned up to the sky, relaxing those muscles and allowing the toes to naturally turn out. We can have our eyes closed or just gently relaxed. Mentally, Letting ourselves know that it's time to experience the rest, relaxation, and renewal of Yoga Nidra. Reminding ourselves on the value of relaxation and the ability to either stay awake and relax at the same time, but knowing that it's okay if we fall asleep while we're here. Letting our experience be natural and effortless. We may like to repeat to ourselves, I am practicing Yoga Nidra. And now let's make your Sankalpa. A consistent statement that can express a positive quality that's personally beneficial or affirm a change in your behavior for the better or reflect something meaningful you would like to do with your one precious life. Something to ignite your energy so your spirit soars. We can use this time to formulate your sankalpa, resolve, goal, intention, heartfelt desire, whatever you would like to call it. But usually what we do is we keep it clear, brief, and sincere. Usually we keep it consistent by using the same one from one practice to the next until it's no longer necessary. So something like, I am well rested. I am peacefully engaged. I am okay with whatever comes my way. Or maybe something like, I am building a sattvic life. Whatever statement you think feels genuine and a good fit for you, repeating it to yourself at least three times here. Once more, we can take a breath in, sighing out, and letting go. Giving ourselves a little pat on the back for being here and our commitment to our health and well being. Placing our awareness on our physical body. Notice where the back of the head touches the surface supporting it. 
having a direct experience of the contact point where your head meets the surface, letting the surface completely support your head. You may open your mouth a little and gently move your jaw up and down. Easy does it. Now letting the mouth rest, closing your lips and allowing your teeth to part slightly. The corners of your lips can soften and relax, allowing any facial expression to fade away. Keeping the eyes closed, focusing the attention on your eyes, maybe really squeezing them shut, lifting the eyebrows, and then releasing, becoming aware of the eyes resting in their sockets, sensing the outside air on your eyelids. Become aware of how your eyelids touch and cover your eyes like eye shades. Even though your eyes are closed, you can still see. Focusing your inner vision and watching whatever appears on the inside shade of your eyelids. Just noticing whatever it may be coming and going. Maybe dark. There may be sensation of color, shape. Watching whatever comes and goes, it doesn't really matter. There's no need for making comments about it. Allowing it simply to pass by our eyes. Letting the eyes rest, becoming still, yet watching the inner space. Simply looking and softly gazing. Watching in stillness. Moving on, we begin noticing the sounds you're now hearing. Focusing on the distant sounds simply taking them in. There's no need to name them or to prefer one sound over another. Letting the sounds come to you, maybe imagining this is the first time you have ever heard that sound. Listening to the sounds nearby now, the sounds right around you, letting them come and go, listening effortlessly. Listening to the sound of your own breathing, noticing the air coming and going. You may be aware of other internal sounds Listening with vague curiosity, openness, and acceptance. Listening without reacting. Coming to our sense of feeling, noticing now the body, the whole body. It's time to mentally pay a visit to various areas of the body. You may like to repeat the areas that I say to yourself as you mentally follow along. Maybe imagining a color or warmth in this space or a light glowing from within. Mm -hmm. 
mentally finding your right hand, sensing where your right hand is, finding it with your mind, your entire right hand, the right thumb, pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger, little finger, the palm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, right shoulder, underarm, down the right side to the hip, upper leg, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole, top of the foot, the big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, the entire right side of the body, Mentally find your left hand, sensing your left hand, your entire left hand, the left thumb, pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger, little finger, the palm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, left shoulder, underarm, Down the left side to the hip, upper leg, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, 
sole of the foot, top of the foot, the big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, the entire left side of the body, continuing to focus the mind on the body, becoming aware of the base of the spine, low back, mid-back, upper back, top of the head, center of the forehead, the right eye, the left eye, the right cheek, the left cheek, tip of the nose, upper lip, lower lip, the space between the lips, the tip of the tongue, right ear, left ear, the tip of the chin, the space of the Adam's apple, the space where the collarbones meet. Heart center, the sternum. Feel the right arm, the entire right arm. Feel the right leg the entire right leg. Feel the left arm, the entire left arm. The entire left leg, feel the left leg. Feeling both arms and both legs together. Feeling the whole body at once. The front of the body, back of the body, sides of the body. Sensing your whole self the air touching your skin, the space around you. Can you notice a sense of feeling yourself with calmness and alertness? Feeling the lower body, imagining a deep dark red filling this space, feeling heavy, grounded, supported, and secure. Feeling the low belly and the low back. Imagining the color orange filling this space, feeling fluid and creative, emotionally alive. Feeling the strong abdominal muscles and mid-back muscles, seeing them bright yellow. Feeling accomplished, secure, confident, 
powerful, feeling really good about yourself here. Noticing green filling the space of our hearts and arms. Feeling open, receptive, loving, and cared for. Seeing the color blue filling the space of the neck and throat. Becoming aware of being completely understood and incredibly good at understanding others. Knowing what it's like to be able to truly connect with yourself and others. Feeling seen and heard. Seeing a deep indigo color filling the space of the face and the forehead. Feeling insightful, intuitive, ready to see and plan for the future. Seeing a brilliant ultraviolet light glowing from the top of your head, expanding your awareness and settling into a feeling of being connected, of belonging, a sense of contentment. Resting here in pure awareness. Recalling once more your Sankalpa, Resolve, Heartfelt Desire, Intention, whatever you call it, and repeating it to yourself three times again. We can begin to deepen our breath, bringing ourselves back to awareness of the world around us. You may like to stay where you are with your breath practice, enjoying how you're feeling. You may be asleep already, and that is perfectly fine. We may like to take hands to heart or hands to heart center. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me. If you're watching the replay, thank you so much for sharing your energy with us through time and space. From my light to yours, namaste. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, I would love to know 
how you are uh, doing in the sort of final stretch or past the midway point. Feel free if you want to type a little note in the chat or send me an email ever to touch base. That is always an option.